see us. Hello, people out there. Um, hello, hello, yeah, hello. We have, what? Mercs, mini set. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, imagine we'll just vibe out for news. long enough that we don't need explanations, which is good because I don't have one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and and whatever we're gonna say is gonna be outdated by the time most people listen to this anyway. Rainbow DK. Yeah. That was outdated when it came out. Oh, it was so much fun though. It is fun. It's I, worse I than the deck we it. talked about last week, but it's fun. Yeah. It is getting a new card, oh. so maybe it's good now. I I feel like it can be the deck we talked that about. doesn't seem to be the card that it wants though I mean, it's a fine it's, card i mean it's, it's a fine. big old dragon yeah, yeah it's solid it's three corpses that's true that's kind of and a it kills, good and it kills two things it. theoretically also there are some like you can find some howling blasts or something like that i don't know maybe you can end up with like a um a, a double frost where you play might have oh or whatever. i didn't I didn't catch that. Yeah, I guess it being seven, you could do a. Yeah. I mean, I guess if yeah, if you're doing like the 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 U U B. You know, the thing. I then, I actually you know, yeah I could see I don't really see B B E. Uh, B B F being a thing. Not U U B F F B. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Um. But I'm thinking uh, you you being blue from magic. No, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I don't see it. Um, <laughs> Double frost. Yeah. Double yeah. frost. I, 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 I don't. I don't really letters. see blood 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 frost being a thing, but frost frost blood I think totally can work. Yes. Um, and I imagine because like rainbow double blood is hand buff. Like that's what double blood is, and it's just not quite there. Um, yeah. Not in standard. And, right. In wild, um, quite good. Wait, how? There's not like more cards. I'm even DK. There, you have corpses all the time because you play Gen. Oh. Sure. Yeah. And also and like yeah, so you get to haunted yeah, creeper. Haunted yeah. creeper, quite okay. good. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So like you just you blood tap like blood I thought tap that was just tap. for unholy. I didn't I didn't think about that in the context. Yeah. Of yeah. Double cool. blood, single uh, unholy in wild is actually quite fun. I like that. Um. That just something like uh, Gan is able to to make cool. Yeah, just a fifty percent reduction on your hero power is enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, it's always better than Baku. Does that run? Uh, does that run chain, run chain gang? Because that's even, or is that? Too uh, you can, but you run swarm guard. So like, you don't yeah, need both. Redundant. I don't yeah. think. Uh, I mean, sometimes is redundancy is good, but you can. But, is uh, but you do run no muncher because that card is bonkers. Like, <laughs> so, especially it is bonkers in like out, the yeah. best way possible, right? Yeah. Get the attack way up, yeah. It's really the... good, but also if it kills a minion, like it's gonna it's gonna get removed. So it's the yeah. only wild card I see in this list is a uh, mana feeder panthara, and. <clears throat> But Man of Eater Panther, like, pretty good. Like, I don't know. Just that Bone Digger Geist, always a totem golem on two. Always. 100% of the time. Um, yep. So, yeah. like, it's it's nice to play totem golems. Priest of the Deceased, online very quickly. Blood Tap, online very quickly. Uh, so, it just, mm-hmm. it makes sense. We will be chatting about new cards, Phantom Miner, but right now, Edelweiss is learning how Double Blood Single Unholy is a perfectly reasonable strategy in Wild, but not good enough in Standard, despite being 27 of the same cards. Yeah. Oh, did yes. we get a couple new cards? Oh, good. I thought we were just gonna have. Well, I mean, we got the, the one. The ones. Oh, have you not seen? Actual. Have you not seen the horseman? Oh my! This is oh. this is like the adult card. <laughs> we'll right, be look, fine. I, we'll I got be home fine. from work. <laughs> yeah, don't. I got home from work, we, and I. Yeah, no, I want your live reaction to this on air. Do I went into low approach. power mode. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I came well. home, and I went into my office. And I turned out the lights and I put on my my uh, sleep blindfold and I just like listened to a podcast for an hour and a half with Weiss on top. So this is this is my my sleep thing. It's got uh, it's got like built in headphone deals. Oh, yes. OK. Is it, well, I saw there there was one that was I saw a recommendation that actually has like cups for the eyes. Oh, so yeah, I'm sure this is not that yeah. this is yeah. the cheapest one. <laughs> yeah, because that's supposed to be very good for like sensory things. Because then it well, keeps anything from touching your eyes. 
you're going to need to plug in because I think that there will be a high draw while we're talking about these cars. Yes. So I shouldn't I shouldn't look at it yet. No, don't don't look at it. I want your live reaction. Yeah, I think it's going to be way more fun that This way. is the most Edelweiss set of cars. I will, I, I will yes. re-explain the the uh the low power mode situation. Yes. Cuz we're not recording yet, which we could do like now if you want. I guess, yeah. I, I guess it's I mean, it's time. I guess, I guess that's that's the reason that we're doing this. So The know. time has come, the walrus said. Just speak of many things. There's a walrus? Well, Alice in Wonderland, right? Oh, yeah, that thing. John Lennon. <laughs> he was the walrus. Indeed. Imagine. Oh. Oh. That snuck up on me. That snuck up on me. I, I, it's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> it's, okay. it's, it's all downhill all right. from all right. here. <laughs> <Ooh>. Okay. <laughs> Shall we start recording this? I, I have been. I am recording. Recording. Okay. I am also recording. All right. Paul was the walrus? Man, I thought it was John. I thought Brad was the walrus. Oh, and glass. It's, all right. This is irrelevant. All right. <laughs> I'm ready when you all are. I'm I'm recording, so. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. My wife is messaging me on Discord. Clap from the other room. I may have been doing this for too long. I always forget that we need to do it because it's just not useful. No, it's not useful at all. At this point, it is very much ritualistic. But I explained this to you when we started editing. Like, I don't even bother with that anymore. I just line up the end of the show. Like, it's whatever. No. Nope. It's all... I go in, patrons. I make my cuts, and then I line it up. It's, yeah. Patrons, you know now, do not tell anyone. Patrons and live listeners, do not tell anyone. This is a very important part of the process. All right. Starting the show in five, four, three, two. Shadows hide you. I am listening. Our paths converge. So good to see you. Hail to you. Never lose hope. Here for a chat. By you. It has only begun. Fight on, friend. Hello and welcome to episode 382 of Coin Conceit, a Hearthstone podcast dedicated to making the competitive side of the game more accessible to you. It is Thursday, February 9th. When did that happen? Uh, from Gadsden, New York, it's me, Ridiculous Hat. From Nomergan, Ohio, we have Edelweiss. Hello. Hello. And from Northern Massachusetts, we have Wicked Good. Hi. Hello. Hi. Torby, Flenderson, and Jumps, thank you so much for being our newest patrons. You're great. All of our patrons are great, but you're the newest one, so thank you. Live listeners, viewers... Thank you for being here. Everyone, thank you so much for your support of the show. And those of you leaving us reviews really helps other people find the show. So thank you so much for doing that. All right. Life. Ladder. Metroid. Steve. Talk to us. Well, well, yeah. I I mean, I guess there was a Nintendo Direct yesterday. So one of my children literally cried when when they revealed Fantasy Life because she was so excited. Like, it was a very... This was a very eventful Nintendo Direct yesterday, but um, they announced Metroid Prime Remastered and then dropped it that day, and that's basically what I've been playing for the past day, and it is very good. And being able to play Metroid Prime with dual sticks is, I think, the thing that I needed to actually enjoy Metroid Prime, because that was, like, I'm... I, I am fairly notoriously not interested in 3D versions of games that I enjoyed in 2D, but I think I'm starting to come around on Metroid. So I uh, I just got the, not the charge, well, I got the charge beam. I just got the uh, the bombs, the morph ball bombs. So I don't know how far I am into the game, but I put a few hours into it. And uh, it is if you are the kind of person who would like to play Metroid Prime, this is worth your money. Um, I, there was a bunch of other stuff and like I installed, I, I, those of you who think that, you know, I only make puns on the show and don't torment my family. Um, I, Maureen, Maureen got very excited about the Game Boy games that they announced in the direct yesterday. 
And so I got, you know, I got the, the family switch and I installed it and I gave it to her. And she said, what are you doing? I, it's 10 o'clock at night. I don't want to play Nintendo. I just want to go to bed. I said, well, I thought maybe you might want to go to Kirby's Dreamland. And she told me to get out. So, <laughs> so, so just, just in case you think I'm saving it all up for the show, I assure you I am not. And somehow I'm still married. Um, but I did hit legend with, um, with unholy death night right after the show last week. Um, I came in at like two fifty, which was given that I had been at 9,700 legend the week before is, uh, you know, I, I guess I repaired my rank. I'm still, I'm still like just inside top 1000. I've obviously decayed a bit because people came in after me and I've been, I, I played some unholy DK. I mostly played heroic brawls when I was playing Hearthstone this week, just because, I got a little bit of ladder anxiety with seeing a three digit number on my rank, which happens. Um, but I got a, I had six and nine win. Is, was it eight? No, it was not six and nine win runs with Unholy DK. I did a run with Dragon Paladin and got seven wins with that. So, um, you know, I, I, I feel like I understand the deck well enough. I tried some of the Rainbow DK. I do not like it. The Unholy DK is just better. Um, just cause like, I, I'm turning into a kind of player who wants a win condition in my deck. I don't know what's happening to me, but, um, I know it's weird, but listeners, can uh... you hear my face? <laughs> I'm making it, I'm making it pretty loud. No, no it's okay. I, there, there's a happy ending to the story because there's only so much aggro I can play. And then I eventually went back and tried to build quest priest. And, uh, that's been okay. Just because it's, uh. It, you know it it does pretty well against unholy so and there's a lot of that so it you know it i i ran into enough quest priest that i realized it might be good and it is so i got back to back on my bs and uh you know i'll probably I, I don't know how much i'm gonna play between now and when the mini set comes out um i mean i'll be playing on my stream tomorrow but it's it's nice to come home after you know going to aggro town for a little while i guess but you know, it's it's fine. I, I've been kind of flipping back and forth whenever I feel like I'm not getting very far with control. Then I'll just go and, you know, hit some people in the face and then, you know, get bored of that and then go back to control. So, you know, I'm you can right. take the priest out of the boy, but you can't take the boy out of the priest or whatever. I don't know if it's backwards, but whatever. It's <laughs> it is what it is. I've never really loved that expression in this context. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> I guess that's not really the best the best thing, way to use that phrase. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh it's, God. Okay. <laughs> we're not going to explore that. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Uh, raw audio listeners, yeah. how you doing? Enjoy. How you doing out there? Yeah. Because because this is gonna this is gonna boil <laughs> off when we cook it. <laughs> I I marked it down. It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> Listen, this is some special live content. That's what we're doing right now. Yeah, that's what you get. You get to enjoy that because I did not even. That's that's. I, I've been. I know um, where you were going. It was. It was. Yep. It was fine. So. Well, I I basically have been trying to catch up from from like sleep deprivation after having to go get my wife and child from back from their their Canada school class trip at one o'clock in the morning on Sunday night. So I've mm. been kind of like trying to battle my way back from that sleep deficit all week, and then and then we get here. So enjoy that, listeners. <laughs> enjoy my sleep de deprivation. One a.m. Jeez. Yeah. Well, they got, they had, um, like the bus broke down and then they had to change buses and then there was a jackknife tractor trailer. And then because they changed buses, apparently they had to change buses again when they got to the border because that bus could only operate in Canada or something. And then they had to stop at like a pizza hut in Vermont at nine o'clock at night for dinner. And Yeesh. yeah, it was, it was like, a, I mean, it's only like six hours to Quebec, I think from here, but it was like a a nine hour ordeal that they were uh it was snowing also when they were driving back by the way so because of course it was so yeah it was i was nice and warm in my house just you know but uh but you didn't were, have any pizza uh, hut. i didn't i didn't have any pizza hut i'm probably the one who came ahead came out ahead on that deal though because pizza hut is uh it's it's not it's not the best pizza that you can get we'll just put it it's pizza hut is a restaurant so, yeah. Edelweiss, tell us about your life in Ladder. So, it hasn't really been Ladder. It's been Heroic Brawls. I uh, did not 
have any uh, 11 or 12s this time. I probably could have had an 11, but I, I screwed up my phylactery run on, on 10 wins. I was against a paladin, and I didn't count, and I should have counted because I, I, I could have gotten more damage in, and I was not going to die, and so I should have just, like, had it be in play because it's not like they ran starfish. So, um, But, you know, live and learn. And... In spite of that, I feel like because I didn't have any, like, real crashes either, I think I only had one run below eight. And uh, so my average was, was pretty solid. And due to, you know, still having full-time work, which has not previously been the case when these have happened, I don't think... I just didn't do as many. So I may actually have the gold to get the mini set by the time it comes out, or at least very nearly. I may not have to, because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to open all the packs first and then get it with gold and just assume that the DK location is going to get nerfed or something. Uh, I, I don't know. But uh, it seems reasonable that there will be something that will need to be rebalanced. And so the more copies I can guarantee of stuff from the mini set, seems like it'll be, it'll be profitable. But it's, uh, I don't know. It's been pretty chill in terms of Hearthstone stuff. I don't think I've really played much ladder at all. <laughs> it's just, except to like test things to, that I you know, see if I wanted to do in Brawlicium or not. So ladder became your casual is what you're saying. Pretty, I mean, that's always <laughs> the way it's been. I, I don't, casual does not function for me. It doesn't feel like good testing. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've never been a casual person and you've always been a heroic brawl main whenever it's in the client. Like, that's oh yeah, just no, what you do. great. Um, and look, I still have been kind of decompressing with with Elden Ring. I I finally was like, okay, I guess I should I should, I should do the whole Lindell thing. And uh, I beat Morgat because I had a uh, fully upgraded Tish. So kind of didn't matter what my build was at the time because Tish carries. <laughs> Those who don't know, this is a this is an assassin summon who does some damage based on enemy max HP. It's very strong. <laughs> I don't know how it works. I just know that it does work. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that'll happen. Um, and as for me, I mean, it's kind of like, so I got Legend with Rainbow DK. And like, I was already in Diamond. So like, please do not view this as a large endorsement of Rainbow DK. I had a good time. I had a couple turn five lethals. I put Malignant it's Horror. It's very in fun. It is very fun. It is indeed extremely fun. Is it as good as Unholy? Absolutely not. Is it a reasonably good deck? N n not really. But is it fun? Yeah. Am I going to keep playing it? Probably. Maybe. I don't know. After the mini set, maybe. Um, but what I found, actually, is that I think this format is a lot, lot better than the pre-nerf one. Much, much better. Yeah. Yeah. I also haven't found any decks that have really excited me, and I've tried a lot of them. And there are things out there that are interesting, and part of it as well is that, like, this time of the year and some stuff that, like, that is happening for me outside of the game is definitely distracting me. Uh, but I, and also I lost a bunch yesterday, so of course my opinion is going to be a little different. Um, but I'm definitely chasing some novelty that I haven't been able to find for a little bit. And I like how open and diverse the format is. I like how good aggressive strategies are. But there's definitely some level of, okay, what's next? That, yeah. hmm. you know, I mean, six sets is kind of hard to avoid overall. It's the kind of thing that uh, we've been playing with a lot of these cards for a while, and they're still viable, and that's good for accessibility reasons. Um, but uh, I'm just, I'm not in the rotation mindset, but I'm starting to wonder what it'll look like. It's already a couple months away. Uh, I've tried so much stuff. I ran into Tonbury Blue last night on Ladder. We were both playing priests, but I was playing oh, no. the control priest because I wanted to try it out. He was on Undead Priest, and I said, you will be surprised at my choices. And he messaged me on turn three like, did Wicked Good make you do this? He did not. <laughs> I did it all on my own. I'm shocked. Like, what is, what is happening that you're playing the I, control I, priest? So the first game, I was posting the Vicious Syndicate decks, and the first game, 
Like I look through the list and I'm like, you know what? I want to harvest some envy. I want to do that. I want to go harvest some envy. So the first game I queued up was against a thief rogue and I demolished them. I killed them on turn nine. And I was like, hey, I want to do that again. And then I played against two undead burn priests, which seems like a largely unwinnable matchup in a row. One was Tonbury. Uh, one was Sun Kuino from Vicious Syndicate. And they both, like, I kill their stuff and I die anyway. So there wasn't really a lot I could do. It just was a complete blowout both times. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe no. Maybe not. Maybe not this. Um, well, what if I told you that there was an undead thief priest that hit top 200 <laughs> legend on EU yesterday? Oh, no. I think I played against it. Does it involve giving an undying acolyte reborn or undying disciple? No. The three seven. No. Okay. Because no. I, I was, I was I playing. It's, that's that's too that's too high curve for this for this version of the deck. Oh, I have seen so many versions of undead priest that I don't even know like what is the list right it seems like people are still figuring it out i made my own and then i started seeing other ones and and i would sometimes lose to the ones that had you know spirit guide or undying disciple because they were just resurrecting big stuff and they were priests so they could heal out of my my uh shadow things that i was doing uh i actually run it as full shadow so i have the two damage hero power and that's kind of my preferred method i'm curious what tonbury's list was because Probably a better deck than me. I don't know. Yeah. And it's one of the things that I've been enjoying the most uh, recently has been these sort of three drop priest. I also, I think I do like having the two mana five five just because it helps for early board control and for uh, getting triggers when I want them because you don't have to attack on turn three with it, right? You curve it out on two. Lots of times you can just hold it, and it's like, well, if they kill it, they were going to use that removal on something else anyway. And if they don't, you can just wait until you can get it back off of, uh, shoot, what's his name? The, is it a bishop? I don't know. Basileth? Dude that resurrects your undead. Basileth. Yeah. 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 High priest Basileth. And yeah, so I, I really like having the, the two drop in there and just being more aggressive and sometimes you just you know get the um what what's the song beta the one from v for vendetta whatever you know fireworks <laughs> happening when you play zyrella because they just take the three, 1812 three damage, overture three damage. great song or no yeah. the william tell overture right yeah. sure yeah <laughs> anyways um Steve linked this abomination of an unholy <laughs> or undead. This deck is not good, by the way. This deck is not good. I played oh, it. So I'm looking forward to losing I, with it later. Mm, um, yeah. Undead <laughs> tempo thief priests where with mysterious visitors. For those of you who don't on. know what that There's card is. touched attendant and no Astalor. What are that, we was doing? My, that was the first thing I changed. I cut the Banshees for an Astalor and a Zarela hero. because and the, and the only games that I've won have been double attendant Astalor. With this deck, I have I have not won another game with it. So, <laughs> so my it's... my win rate would be even worse if I hadn't made that change. I I this cannot possibly be good. This is absolutely the a bait deck list. We'll have it in the show notes if anyone wants to try it. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm I can objectively appreciate this Hearthstone meta, and it is better than the last one, but. I have found less of an ability to really be engaged by it. Um, and so I've been doing some stuff like some other games. Uh, there's a mobile game that came out. Not mobile. It's a, it's a, there's a, a card-based roguelike dungeon crawler that I loved on Steam that had a full mobile port, I think last week, called Forward Escape the Fold. It's on iOS. It's on Android. It's like $2. It is fantastic. It is really, really great. There are like 10 different classes. They all play distinctly differently. It, it like, you die a lot, but runs are really fast. It, there are uh, different hero powers and different items you pick up. And like, it's just, I'll have a link to that in the show notes too. And I've been playing a bunch of that and I've gotten a couple people in Discord hooked. I'm hoping to get some more. It's fun. It's, uh, so I like, I've been trying that out. I've been playing, you know. Been snapping a little bit, but not a ton. They just did some nurse over there. It's all right, but I just don't play that game that much anymore. Like, I clear my dailies every day, and I roll with it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hearthstone's decent right now, but 
some new stuff is on the horizon. Speaking of which, he segued. Gadgets and Gazette always gets the scoop. Do we do the sad stuff or the, ha or the happy stuff first? I want to do the sad stuff first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's do the sad. Let's get the sad stuff out of the way. We've had enough sad stuff. But let's just get that out of the way and then we can we can improve from there. Okay. So, there's a new Mercenaries update. Uh, there's some new features being added. Six more Mercs are being added. There are dual-type Mercenaries uh, with, the, with the new tags, the new functionality that they brought over from Constructed. Uh, there are the faction banners finally, so you can see who is Horde, who is Alliance, whatever. Uh, and there's a new mythic endgame boss rush. Hold on. Uh, so the new mythic endgame boss rush, it's basically a bounty where you have three bosses in a row and the third boss is two bosses simultaneously so it like stitches together bosses from two different bounties or from three different uh wow. bounties four different bounties right boss fight another boss fight two boss fights at the same time sounds kind of wacky so there's going to be a different challenge every day it resets weekly it has user selectable difficulty there's going to be different anomalies which are alterations to how the fight goes different rules and when you win, you can use your Renown, which is your endgame currency, to upgrade your mercs post-max. So even if they're maxed, you can make them stronger for harder boss fights in the future. This is theoretically an endless feature for PvE. I don't think it translates to PvP. I don't know. We'll find out in the patch notes. And it's good that this is endless, because while there may not be an end to the boss rush leveling, there is an end to Mercenaries content support. Maintenance mode is here. I'm just going to read this. After these updates, we'll be focusing on making the Hearthstone and Battlegrounds modes the best they can be. At the same time, Mercenaries will continue to get support for bug fixes and periodic balance changes as needed, but no further regular content updates with the new additions in this patch. We hope that Mercenaries will be a fun, fulfilling mode for players. To everybody who has ever chased a bounty or gathered around the campfire, we thank you for making this chapter in Hearthstone's history special, and we hope you'll enjoy everything Mercenaries has to offer in 25.4. Edelweiss, you get to go first, because I think you were the one that was deepest in this. Um, Honestly, not not for a while. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. I was for a bit after it sort of fell off. I was still, as new stuff came out, I would end up getting the new mercs because I had enough packs. Uh, and then I would watch the old Guardian videos to maybe do some of the event things. And then it just became harder and harder to fit in the time to do that. And now my, you know, in-bed activity is Marvel Snap, not Mercenaries. So it's sort of its position in my life is, is kind of uh, fallen out. And I think what's sad is that the thing that was so exciting to me about mercenaries and i think for for many people that looked at it and saw potential was the pvp and i think it has really really cool pvp and so many of us just were not interested in what seemed to be the main focus which is the pve it, it seemed set up as though well it's for the pve and then look after words right if you still want to do stuff you can do pvp I, I don't know if that's really how they thought about it but that is how it felt <laughs> and i sort of wanted the fighting game version of this where it was just like just give me all the things and let me fight people you know <laughs> because i i want to do theorycraft and these different uh teams and do all this cool stuff but i don't want to have to grind to get all the things and that was just that's just a different game. So yeah, it's like kind of a bummer for for the lost potential, but I, I had already hit a point where I felt I was not realistically ever gonna spend the time to get my mercs to a point where I would feel like I could just roll into PvP and, and I don't know how the queue times are for PvP at this point <laughs> either. Almost in a way, it being sunset here as as like maintenance mode means it's actually achieved. 
more achievable, right? Yeah, there's not uh, new stuff coming out. was talking about this in the Discord, like, knowing that I can get to the end point makes me more likely to play because it doesn't feel endless. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of, kind of backwards, but, but I suppose a, a silver lining, right? And yeah, maybe I'll just try and remember to go in and do my coin conversions and everything. And over time, eventually I'll catch up just from doing the daily coin conversions and, and like making sure there's, there's some mercs in the, the auto level up thing. And, and eventually without me having to grind, it'll all just get there. <laughs> what a weird thing where like the way to make the system seem more friendly is to remove content infusions like i don't know it's such yeah. a shame man like it's the i understand it was built for pve but the pvp is so good and they did it by accident i think like they just threw it yeah. in there and then it turned out to be really interesting and uh the systems never got out of the way yeah well they never pivoted right like the way that they would have saved it was pivoting into making it a pvp mode and the problem was that the economy was so tied up in pve that they never could do that right it was it was designed to be a gotcha game and gotcha games generally don't have you playing pvp for that reason like if you look at like puzzle and dragons or fire emblem heroes like the pvp modes are asynchronous for the most part right like you're not actually playing against somebody else you're playing against like somebody else's team that they threw up there Right. So in order for them to have an actual PVP mode, they would need to be able to allow you to get to a point where you could compete and not be held back by the by the state of your team. And and what's it, it wasn't even pay to win because you couldn't even pay to get yourself upgraded that way. Right. There was always this time investment and it just was too much. And. I I I, th I really do think if they had leaned into PVP, if they'd been able to do that, or if they'd like focus grouped it outside of Blizzard or something, I don't know, and been able to change it before it got so baked into the economy, maybe they would have been able to get there. But it's all it's also just like very different than what we have, you know, what we have in the rest of the client. And I think there was already just a bad taste in, in a lot of people's mouths from the way that it was introduced in the economy when when it first came out um even i i think that there was there's a lower like it, it's not like battlegrounds where battlegrounds just came out and it's like here you go and it was amazing and it was something that was accessible and mercenaries was basically the complete opposite and it felt like an like an almost uncharacteristically economy first right like i mean not that you know constructed is necessarily cheap to get into but it's gotten fairly player friendly over the years certainly and certainly you know compared to when it, where it first started and this felt like a step back for that and i think that there's a lot of trepidation about getting sucked into something like that too um i mean even the people who were very engaged in it weren't putting money into it because they couldn't see the return for their investment and that's a problem, right? So, like, if it wasn't making money and it wasn't getting player engagement, then it this is kind of the natural conclusion. And I would I would guess that the coin rework, the excess coin rework that we got, what was it like four months ago? That was probably like the last chance. And that coin rework was way too little and way too late. Yeah, it's. Uh... It was kind of remarkable how much energy was put into it up front and then how quickly it seems like things ground to a halt. And I would love to have been a fly on the wall during those meetings because it really felt like the biggest conflict of internal interest I can imagine. Um, because it's yeah. the, the business team and the design team had to have had really different goals here. Don't know for sure. Unsubstantiated. It's not based on anything other than playing right. the mode where it feels like right. they were made by different teams. Uh, and you could see how quickly the the support fell off as the player base fell off. Because we talked about it on this show. Like, I played it every day for a while. 
and then I just didn't anymore. And it turns out that wasn't just me. It wasn't just us. And it just became a losing battle with the amount of resources they need to bring to bear to probably make less money. Right? Like, the changes that would make the mode better would make them less money. And when you construct a mode specifically for business purposes, which is what it unfortunately felt like, even though I stand by the gameplay being good, it's really hard to justify showing a quarter-by-quarter drop in something that you designed to show a quarter-by-quarter improvement. I I mean, even the fact that it was felt like it was designed to make money, it also designed like it was... Like, it wasn't... It didn't give you a path to spend that money, right? Like, that's the other problem, is that even if you were going to invest, like, if you wanted to just get there, right? If you just wanted to get a full PVP team and get going, there was no real way for you to, it, it's kind of like the same co- co- um, complaint about Marvel snaps economy, right? That there's no, there was no direct way for you to buy the thing that you wanted, in, you know, reasonably. Right. Mm-hmm. And that I think was kind of the biggest problem. Like if you're going to get packs, like the packs were, once you had the Mercs and the portraits or even some of the portraits that you wanted, like the coins are so such like low odds to hit the ones that you wanted to hit. Like it was just, there's, there wasn't any duplicate protection on those coins in the packs. And so, and you know, especially if you're trying to level up like a, like a legendary Merc, which are generally the ones that were going to be in PVP comps, were going to be epics and legendaries for the most part. I mean, you had some of the rares that were in there, but a lot of them were epics and legendaries. Like you're just opening pack after pack, trying to hit, enough coins to do anything and even just hitting it in a pack doesn't usually wasn't even enough to upgrade like a power like you had to hit a bunch or start grinding bounties which was like a a fairly significant time investment and it just like the like the grind wasn't fun enough like something like diablo right does that right where diablo like a diablo season is just running random levels over and over again and you know optimizing that and then trying to get drops of equipment and then going i'm talking about diablo 3 not diablo immortal like that that's a whole other (laughs) discussion but like diablo 3 you go into like a rift you go you run it in five minutes you get a bunch of stuff you sell most of it or salvage most of it and you do it again but running the rift is fun right so like you're doing something that's fun in the you know and there is some grinding in like speed runs or whatever to get the equipment to allow you to do the push runs. And that's where the fun is. The, the grinding of, you know, the same bounty over and over and over again, just to try to hit it until they reformed it and got rid of the mysterious strangers, but just trying to hit the mysterious strangers just to be able to get the, to, to get the unlocks. Like it wasn't, it just wasn't a good use of time after a while. It's just like that much. Every time that a new Merc came out, it was like homework, right? To to be able to get it to a point where you could actually play with it and have the fun that you had to like, you know, go do your dishes for six hours before you could actually, you know, get to take to take your toy out of the box and play with it. It's It was just misguided, unfortunately. Well, yeah. Mercs. We'll miss you, but unfortunately, not that much, which is probably why it's being shut down. Um, We'll miss what you could have been, but we do have some good news, too. We have some new stuff coming, and we get to explain a very old meme to our newer listeners, because (laughs) Nax out? Nax out? The Lich King calls for us to return to Nax Ramus. The battle for Silvermoon rages on. Return to Nax Ramus is the March of the Lich King miniset coming out on Tuesday, February 14th. So, sorry all of you Valentine's Day spouses. We're going to have some Hearthstone to play. By the way, we should take the time to explain here. Whenever a new expansion comes out, a patch drops, people will reply or post Nax out. Because the first expansion in Hearthstone history was the Curse of Naxxramas. My understanding as to the root of this meme, I wasn't actually playing at the time, but the release was kind of 
sketchy as far as when during the day it came out, when the patch dropped. Were either of you playing during Nax? I, I I think I went in like after it dropped to like because it like the first wing was free, so it got me. I've been playing in beta, and then I fell off, and then I went back. I didn't really start playing until after the phone client came out. But so, I, my but my understanding of it is that like the release date wasn't like specified in advance. So like there was just like a long period of time where people would just like tweet out like or or type in a chat or whatever, nax out and get people to go look to see it was there and it wasn't there. See, I was playing, but I was not like jacked in to any kind of community or, or social media or anything. I didn't I actually don't even know when I made my Twitter account, but I was really just sort of Hearthstone was my hey, this is a card game I can play whenever I want, whereas Magic was, was still my main thing. And, uh, you know, I was in college. And Nox Ramos came out, and I distinctly remember playing arenas to try and get enough gold to get the levels. That was where I was in terms of... Oh, wow. Uh, in terms of Hearthstone. It was like, okay, I want to, like be successful with enough arena runs to to get the gold together to to have Nuxramas because I didn't want to use actual money to get each of the wings. So okay. I, I I just did I, I just did a quick Google search. Yeah, I've been because, doing some and, research and I just want, as well. And I, I just want you to imagine what this would be like today. They announced Curse of Nuxramas on April 11th, 2014. And they re they announced the release date of Curse of Nax Ramus on July seventeenth, twenty fourteen. They it it was coming out like that like that the twenty second. They announced on the seventeenth it was coming out the twenty second. But they went three months from when they announced that it was coming to when Nothing. they actually just were going to tell you the day that it was coming out. Like that's yeah. that's what. So there was like this three months where people were just kind of like waiting for new content. Could you imagine? knowing content was coming for three months and then and and having it announced and then having to wait for that i mean i remember when they announced like whispers of the old gods and that was like in february or march and that wasn't coming out till may and that was for like the first rotation we were just waiting and that felt like an eternity i can't even imagine like what it was like for those three months after they announced next ramus and then like didn't announce a release date anytime up to then Listeners, I apologize if we have the most back in my day energy, because like that is. I mean, this wasn't any of our days. None of, us were, none of us were actually playing this. We're explaining a meme. This is history, no, and I we're was, learning I was about playing. it today. I was but you were playing. I just wasn't. I just wasn't in the community. <laughs> yes, and so that means you were the first person that was like routinely playing Hearthstone because I definitely yeah. like amped up my commitment during Black Rock Mountain. I had an account during yeah. uh, open beta on iPad. So and I I played Rainad Zoo for like a minute and then I came back much much later. Um, but yeah, I remember it's... hating hunters. Yeah, that was a thing back then. It was, it was ridiculous. And yeah. Eagle Horn Bow got charges when my secrets procked. It was horrifying. I, yeah, sorry, I hit the mic there. It 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 was bad. <laughs> um, Is this what I sound like when I talk about Thief Rogue? <laughs> Maybe. it's possible so anyways it was all about fooling streamers into going to reopen hearthstone that's fun anyways we're not going to have to do that because it's going to be a lot more reliable here uh nine years later ten years later no nine years yeah 2014 so mm -hmm. goodness so we have some cards we have a few cards and this is going to be the bulk of the content this episode but we have the death knight card so remember for mini sets you get Three cards per class, and then it's five neutrals, I believe. I think it's five neutrals. Usually, usually, yeah. they, usually there are four legendaries, one epic, and then I think it's like 15 rares and the rest are common, something like that. Yeah. And, the, and the, the, the epic is almost always neutral. Yeah, and it's usually weird. It's usually something weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, epics are weird in general, but usually the mini set epics are like, oh, what's that thing? Um, so... The third mini set of each year is also usually a callback to the other expansions that have come out that year. It's kind of a greatest hits album. And in this case... Usually. There have been two. Uh, there have been three? 
Last year we had... was... Yes, there have been. This would be the third. This will be the third. Yeah. Right? So last year we had yes. uh, uh, Kazakistan's lair, or Anixia's lair. I, I was right, actually. You know what? Yeah. My it first was, answer was, was really correct. That was Kazakistan's lair. lair. It was um, Kazakistan's lair. Anixia was just living in it. Yeah. Yes. And the year before that we had uh, Dark Moon Races, which was... A yeah. bomb mini set, super good, really impactful, better than the actual expansion it was in. But I digress. So I guess uh, before that we had Galakron's Awakening too. The year before that, yeah, that was weird though. That was an adventure. That was a yeah. test. Well, they're they're all kind of weird, but yeah, they are. But it, yes, that was the prototype. You're right. Um, so we have a Death Knight Naga, an undead Naga, a Death Knight location, and a Death Knight Colossal. Because we gotta fill in what they were missing from this year's mechanics. So let's start. We've got Rhyme Scale Siren. It is a three mana two three undead Naga battle cry. If you cast three spells while holding this, freeze three random enemy minions. It has a single frost rune. We've got Construct Quarter, a three mana three durability DK location. It has no runes. Base. It is a base DK card that destroys a friendly minion to summon a four five undead with rush. It's absurd. It's a it's a pretty wacky card. Um, and then uh, <laughs> and then we've got Frost Queen Syndragosa. Yes, we have a Syndragosa Colossal. Yes, this is rad. She is a six six undead dragon. After an enemy minion is frozen, destroy it. And she has two two one wings. They have rush, and whatever they damage, they freeze. And so that means that they freeze something, and then Mom blows them up. Pretty cool. So. Let's talk through these cards. We've got more cards after these, but let's talk through these cards first. Rhyme Scale Siren, the Naga. Kind of weird. Like, Triple Freeze is okay. It will, like, yeah. will this go in Frosty K? We play a lot of spells, but I don't know if I care about this. I think this is more shot if something comes up that is not Triple Frost, because Triple Frost, you've got Frost Rooms Fury. Like, that's what you're building to. And there's just there's so many good options in, in Triple Frost, even among the Double Frost cards. I think of the weapon. I'd much rather have the weapon, Might which can kind of go halvesies based on your corpses yeah. to freeze things and does eight damage than a three mana two three. Uh, I think three spells is a lot. We've we've seen this on on other cards. I know Frosty K does more spells than than other things. But it, it just feels weirdly positioned to me because Triple Frost will have the most spells, but this is a, a single Frost Rune card. Three mana, two, three is not particularly aggressive. Uh, you're not terribly likely to have this online on three. And I don't know, freezing three is pretty good, right? That's fully upgraded flurry, but you have to play a creature to do it. I just, I'm not seeing where this slots in. And I don't think it ever makes a cut in a triple frost. Uh, unless it's a very, very board heavy meta and you're just like, give me all the freezes. Yeah, now, I... notably, you can play it on the same turn as the Colossal and it's pretty good there. <laughs> it doesn't have to go in the deck because Frost Strike is a card. That's right? true. That's very true. So, like, this is something else that you can pull off. The... It's going to be a little awkward off of Frost Strike because then you're going to have to hold it in your hand for a while. But I mean, Frost DK also has, I mean, it has Frost Strike, it has Horn of Winter, it's got um, Icy Touch. Like, it's got a, a, enough early game, I mean, the coin counts too. Um, it's got enough early game spells that it can play that it can turn this on. I don't know how if it's going to be on by turn three consistently, but also doesn't necessarily need to be on mm -hmm. by three consistently. But yeah, I don't know that this goes in a deck, but this is something you'll take off of Frost Strike with, the, with a hand that can support it um occasionally but yeah might of menthol is just better in that deck because you don't really have a lot of uses for corpses other than like marrow manipulator if you get that off of a frost break so. i guess here's what i'm thinking if the the syndragosa deck happens which we'll we'll get to that but it's something that is frost but not triple frost i i see this making the cut because you don't have access to Frostworm's Fury anymore for the full board freeze. So maybe you do Might of Menethil and Rhyme Scale Siren, especially because of the, the synergy with uh, Frost King, Queen Syndragosa. Horn of Winter is still only a double Frost Rune card, so you, know, you still have that. You can do some combos there. Maybe eight mana, Syndragosa, Horn of Winter, Rhyme Scale Siren. That could work. 
but I don't think this ever makes uh, the cut for Triple Frost. What purpose is this card serving? What problem is it solving? Who is this for? What is this for? These are my questions, right? What spell dense deck needs to freeze minions that's currently bad at freezing minions? Because, like, the way that Frost DK wins is, like, four Frost from Furies or whatever, you're already really good at freezing minions. This is, this would be my fifth mass freeze I'd play after double Fury, double Might of Menethil, which I think is a substantially better card. And we don't play Might of Menethil in most lists currently. It's just kind of strange. If it cost two and was a 2-2, two -two, then at least I could say, okay, we're going to use this with Horn of Winter and Syndragosa. I can see how that works. That is a wombo combo that I can work towards that is somewhat realistic and seems pretty powerful. It incentivizes me to run Syndragosa, which is a blood frost card, because then I can run this two. I can play double frost, which I don't currently have a reason to do, for Horn of Winter and Might of Menethil, and I can go Syndragosa, Horn of Winter, this, and I have a really powerful turn seven board swing. Like, that's really strong. But as is, it seems designed to not let me do that, and that's what I want to do, so what am I doing? I don't really have a great answer, so I'm not going to play it. Uh, yeah. So I mean, it seems like it's destined to be either a 2-mana two 2-3 two, or a 3-mana three 3-4 three, at some point, right? Like, uh. it's like, a, the fact that it's a 3-mana 2-3 two, three with a really conditional battle cry means that you need to really, really want that battle cry. And I don't know that you really, really want that battle cry that badly. To put it in a deck, at least. Again, Frost Strike is a card, but... Yeah, yeah it's... so I, I'm, I'm basically thinking this exists to help push a Syndragosa deck, which, in my mind, is Double Frost, Single Blood... Basically, it's, you know, Frost, but with no Munchers and Patchwork and Syndragosa, and maybe the Noxious Cadaver, which is the one-mana Battlecry deal, too, that you also take, too. So it's, like, not a ton of blood cards. It's, like, just, just enough to fill that niche. No Muncher is worth it. No Muncher is ridiculous. But it's... Yeah, it's positioned very oddly it's weird but i mean is is this enough to push that over the top and we'll get to cinder ghost in a second but like I, nobody's playing two frost one one blood now right well exactly. so right. give me a reason to frost make this a two yeah. minute two two well, give me a reason yeah. i i think cinder is the reason and this is support right and they probably felt that it was too powerful at two but for eight mana getting that swing of blow up five mm -hmm. minions is is reasonable I think it's pretty reasonable. So, and the location, which we'll get to next, can also go in any Death Knight and oh, yeah. probably will go in most. I just, I, I might be wrong on this card, uh, Construct Quarter, but it seems, it. I feel like this is going to go to two durability at some point. <laughs> so let's talk about this card because I don't think that's necessarily wrong. This is a 3-mana, three 3-durability three location, destroy a friendly minion to summon a 4-5 or five undead with rush. Okay, so, does not require you to target an undead. And destroy anything you want. That's three wild pawn nulls. Pre-nerf, right? Uh-huh. Uh, really good with foul egg. Really good with... Really good with all sorts of stuff. Synergizes well with, with your minions. hero power. Yeah, good with your hero power. It's good, with minions. It's good yep. for getting you corpses on a turn that you want to play something like a Nerubian Vizier or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or, or just, killing an undead, rather. not. Yeah. But, I mean, getting you corpses is also relevant. It works really well with a lot of things. With a lot of mm -hmm. things. And it is three, four, fives for relatively low cost over time. Uh, yeah. So this immediately goes in unholy for sure. I don't know if there is a blood list that runs it right now, but you know I don't know what blood is going to look I, like. Who knows? Why yeah. wouldn't you? It's three removals. You just do this on your hero power, right? You play it on three as a, a blood deck, and you're like, okay, low tempo turn. Next turn, I hero power, make a four or five. It, yeah. It's just pretty solid in terms of 
removal. Uh, you know, similarly to the way that we felt like the location in Mage was just kind of good in everything. I, I feel this also is pretty good in everything, and I think it's going to get the same nerf. Yeah, I mean, you run a lot of junky minions in Blood Decay, right? Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, yeah. they're, 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 they're do, they do things, right? But like. You run Body Bagger, you run Hematurge, right? Like, you run minions like that, that, like, once you play them, they suck on the board. If you can play one of those and then turn it into a 4-5 and remove something, I think you would. Especially when you get, I mean, the first one's expensive, but the other ones are okay. And by the way, your, your hero power makes a 1-1 one -one that's going to die at the end of the turn. Yeah. So you may as well just have it leave early to avoid the rush and then and then bring a four or five on board. And that's perfectly reasonable. Like you still get the corpse from it is is kind of because they're like there's dark transformation, which is the spell. Right. But dark transformation actually transforms the minions. So you don't get the corpse this way. You get the corpse. Mm -hmm. It just seems it, it seems like a straight upgrade. I, I guess the only thing that I'm. I'm going to push back on Unholy running it for sure. Oh. Wait. Because I don't, like, Unholy doesn't always want to kill its own stuff off. It is most likely to have a minion already in play when you drop Construct Quarter. It's very low tempo for that deck. Wicked. If you turn a Body Bagger into a 4-5, that's pretty good tempo. <laughs> It it is if that's not your whole turn and you did and you started the turn with a board. Look, caverns in shaman is low tempo. The turn you play it, it's a four mana three four. Yeah. But the whole thing is you 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 get that back in later turns. Yeah, I'm so not it's... saying I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that I don't know that it's an auto include because there are cards that look like they should fit in unholy DK and turn out to not be good enough. I mean, we just so put eggs I'm... in the deck, right? Like egg just goes in the deck now. I don't know that you do because egg. If you don't have an activator, and because like that's an you're talking about on dead. You're, you're talking about uh, an incubator. <laughs> it. You, I mean, like if you look at like undead priest, right? Like when you don't find cathedral, and you don't have like a banshee on board or an arms dealer with it, egg sucks. It really does. And so, like, I don't think you're gonna run egg just because you happen to run the location. I don't, I mean, you're not running the location for egg, but I don't know that you're necessarily going to go out of your way to run, to run egg. I mean, you already have things like Verkul Necrolite, right? And, and like Hawk Strider minions to get value out of it. If you're going to do, if you're going to do that, it also takes up a spot on board, right? Which is not irrelevant when you're a Grave Strength deck. That is perhaps the most compelling argument. Although you're usually not in a terrible position if you've got, a full board it's a good problem to have but it's still a problem uh i mean yeah, i yeah. think maybe the thing that is probably the most exciting is that this makes neruby and vizier activations totally free like it's just so mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. easier to activate vizier you yeah. might even start thinking about bone flinger probably not but you could but you could that's not going to be active on turn yeah. two but on turn four or later it is always active now um there are there are some things that I'd be surprised if it didn't end up in the list, and I'd be surprised the list didn't end up changing a little bit because of it. Uh, like, we do have the arms dealer activation. Um, we do have the skeletal sidekick. Like, egg in... If you put this in Unholy, you have a lot more ways to activate it. And most importantly, this activation actually pops the egg, as opposed to priest version of activating it in a swarm undead priest. You're not activating it, you're just making it usable. It goes from unusable yeah. to it's a 1-3 or whatever, or a 2-3. Uh-huh. Yeah, I I would probably first tinker with taking out school teacher or something. Yeah, I can see that. Hmm. It is still two bodies for one card, right? So that which is relevant when you're playing Hawk Strider, right? Like that's that's kind of the thing that makes school teacher good in the deck because you're playing Hawk Strider, it's giving you two bodies to buff with the Hawk Strider. And sure. this is giving you fewer bodies to buff with the Hawk Strider. It is popping the death rattle immediately getting the the body on board, but Part of the value, part of the, the strength of that deck is making a board that your opponent can't clear and you're kind of helping them a little bit. I mean, you're, yeah, you're putting a four or five out too, but like it, it makes your boards a little bit weaker to board wipes because you're removing a death rattle sometimes, not always, right? Like but you could is. just clear a chicken, right? 
you could clear a chicken and make it a four or five and that works too. Right? It is it's, so yeah. much better at murdering other board decks though. If yeah. we learned anything from Wild Pawn all, it is that getting a four or five rush as early as like turn three uh, is pretty devastating for other board based decks. So the fact that I think Unholy is most likely to, you know, curve body bagger into necromancer, maybe your risen lives and you turn the risen into uh, a four or five rush. Like it's just it's a lot. It's a I lot mean I'm going to I mean, I'm gonna cut amalgam and I'm gonna put in this. I'm gonna yeah. cut amalgam yeah, and okay. put this in. Okay. Sure, sure. Now, now you're now yep. you're now yep. you're talking. Okay. And then that I'm going good. to cut yeah. I'm gonna cut peasant for egg and see how it works. That's what I'm gonna do. Sure. And try it out. But yeah. I expect we'll be seeing this. Also, this card in Frost DK, actually insane, makes Harbinger of Frost and Chill Fallen Baron substantially oh, better. Yeah. Makes Lady Death Whisper trigger on demand. Makes Nerubian Vizier a clear inclusion. Uh, just gives that deck board presence when your entire deck was just two ones and two twos the, the whole time. Mm -hmm. Really, really big upgrade for that deck. If you're able to play it on three and activate, turn four, school teacher, turn five, play the Nagalang, activate. Uh, like, it just seems you'll be able to build a pretty big board pretty quickly. And I think the biggest question is how do the DK decks interact with each other? Because in all the board-based minion decks I can think of, this is going to give a lot of your stuff Wind Fury, which is pretty spooky. Pretty spooky. Yeah, um, yeah there's just going to be, it's going to be really hard to keep up with the rush. Um, and the, then Cinder the one question I do, The one question I do have before we go on to the next card is, this isn't Arisen Undead, right? So you're going to get a corpse from the 4-5 Correct. also? Correct. Yes. That's kind of a big deal. That is kind of a big deal. Because that's yeah. just giving you, more, that's, that's three corpses in a card, too. Which is not irrelevant. I, it's actually just occurring to me as we're talking through it now. Because that having that being three mana for three corpses over the course of the game is actually kind of a big deal. Yep, it's uh, it's gonna be hard to keep grave strength from being active, and Marogar is gonna be Marrow large, like he's gonna be a big boy. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we also have the new colossal Frost Queen Cindergrosa, seven mana, six six undead dragon, one blood rune, one frost rune. Turn enemy minions is frozen. Destroy it. And then you get two, two, one rushy wings that whatever they hit, they freeze, and then they blow up. Uh, so we've basically talked through this card already. Uh, Rainbow DK is going through some adjustments. Uh, it still is under 50% win rate overall. It is still total bait. This card might make that a little bit better. Uh, we'll see. But it does allow you to remove a couple things and play into other free synergies. We don't have as many free synergies to play into, and Rhyme Scale Siren is pretty actively costed to be difficult to use here. So, like, you can use it with an Icy Touch or whatever, or a Noggling on Howling Blast. I'm not really sure where it's going. Um, it feels reasonable, but this is not the most powerful Colossal we've seen. It's a fun card. I want to try it. It looks rad. It's, it's not the most powerful, but... It's still really solid tempo play. I mean, the fact that just on its own, you kill two things of any size. And if you're just playing it naked, they have to worry about the wings freezing their face, right? So it has that threat. It's like somewhere between, I don't know, Krabatoa and... I'm, I guess the other thing that somewhere between Krabatoa and Leviathan, I'll say. Yeah, it's yeah. probably worse than both of those, but that's okay. Like, I think it's yeah. still playable. But contextually, right? Yeah. It it doesn't leave behind as much power as Leviathan, and you don't get as much direct damage as Krabatoa. But like, you kill two things of any size. And that can be extremely potent. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be a great rogue card. Ugh. Um, <laughs> it's... Stop. It is. I mean... That deck is. is so bad. It... I, I have been parlayed so many times this week, and I... It doesn't matter how bad it is. I'm still annoyed. But... Yeah, it's it's terrible, and I keep losing <laughs> to it. So what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's it's like... 
I think the most interesting thing about this card is the fact that they're it's introducing the concept of multi rune cards, which I don't know that we'd heard was coming. Um, I think no. we, I, I don't remember them talking about that when they introduced the class. So like the fact that they are introducing multi rune cards for the first time, I think that's, that's interesting. I don't, this, the problem with rainbow DK is that it needs a reason to exist. And this doesn't really give it to it because like there aren't like, I don't, the the blood rune on it, it doesn't really fit with all the frost all the freeze cards which net by you know which makes sense are frost cards um so it's like why are you playing blood and frost in the same deck we've we've already tried that with the cards that we're getting i don't think that this particularly makes either rainbow dk or like double frost one blood better because, mm. I mean, you're still giving up Frostworm's Fury and and Rainbow DK. This is so slow for the way that Rainbow DK is currently built. Because Rainbow DK is still... I mean, I guess it's not that slow because it's topping out at Gnome Muncher. But, like, it's not really putting a lot of power on board, right? It's like a removal tool when you can just run things like Obliterate and Asphyxiate and... And and get like you don't have trouble if you're already playing blood cards, getting rid of minions typically. So the reason to do something like Rainbow DK or uh, Double Frost One Blood is for basically having a lot of utility cards. Like rather than having big flashy win condition powerful effects, you're just like I am taking the best of every war, uh, every rune here and there. And so Rainbow DK, I, I mean, they said it's not intended to be functional right now. Right, People yeah, I mean, it's, it's it something, work. it's a meme, but, right? But and like, it's like Hunter Ace, Hunter Ace played it and got 12 wins with it because Hunter Ace could get 12 wins with a ham right. sandwich. But that basically, it's a Flame Tongue Kabu deck, right? Like you have Noxious Cadaver, you have Patchwork, uh, this now is like it just stuff that it makes something while killing something else. Right, that is the whole thing. No muncher. All all of these cards, you know, the blood cards that get included are minions that like kill a thing or deal damage, and this is in that theming. And I think they didn't make it, you know, double frost one blood because uh, they wanted to have the flexibility to go in more stuff, and it's not powerful enough on its own that it needs to be so restrictive in its runes that you have to be double frost one blood i think that'll probably be pretty rare actually as they do more mixed rune cards to have something be double and then one because then it can only go in a single combination which is just like really uh pretty yeah, it's restrictive like, enough just having one and one like that, it's that's, it's yeah. as restrictive if not more so as something being triple rune of something. Yeah. And I think what's mostly, I don't know that this pushes a, a rainbow DK, but I think we may have a pretty good chance of getting a single blood double frost deck that, that can kind of hang with everything else. Uh, not just because of this, but also because of the location. <laughs> The biggest question that I have about this card, about really any card, but we can, as a case study, is this card. After you play something, especially at this mana cost, what does their turn look like and what does my turn, my next turn look like? And what about my next turn is made better by this? If you look at something like Krabatoa, Krabatoa, the impact is pretty clear. I deal 4 damage to 2 things, I attack face for 4, I probably attack face for 2 again, I have a 6-5, right? This is 1 mana more than that. I don't get the face damage. The minion destruction is unconditional unless they have divine shields, which is a big problem. But, you know, paladin may be difficult. Um, and I just have a 6-6. Six, six. A 6-6 six, six is a reasonably sized body. It's powerful enough, the same way that a 6-5 from Krabatoa, if you left it in play, you got hit with it, it hurt. Right? You would lose sometimes from that attack. But it doesn't dramatically change how the board's going to play unless we find a deck that's somehow freezing a bunch, has minions in play, and this lives. 
that's a lot of boxes to check because you need to clear their board when you play this, then they play minions, and then you need to freeze them for that value to be relevant over doing anything else. It could happen, but I think that's a different meta than the one that we're in, and I can't think of a deck as built that would want to play this that isn't already in a good position at the time when you would play this or where this would flip that. That's and where you I can't think follow this up. With, you can't follow this up with Frostburn's Fury, which would be like the ultimate, like if this stuck and then you could play Frostburn's Fury behind it, right? Then you're clearing that whole board the next turn. And that's a, I mean, you can discuss, I mean, again, Frost Strike will find this for you. So there are scenarios in Frost DK without putting this in a deck because uh, you know like hematurge and frost and frost strike which say you know discover a blood rune card or discover a frost rune card those will this will get into both of those pools so it may not be a card that you even have to put in your deck if you can get this down and then frost Room's fury if it sticks now we're talking now we now we have something going on i just i'm having trouble seeing a world right now again with the cards that we have in front of us where we're downgrading which i mean realistically we are if we're going to you know a mixed rune deck in the current meta right to play this because like you're that's what you're basically saying is like i am going to a mixed rune deck to be able to play this card and i don't like i don't see how this is good enough especially when i mean you make the com the i mean first of all also the thing with krabatoa is that if that lives it's not six damage you're taking it's ten right because they have a weapon left over after they've traded that's going to hit you in the face again. So like that's 10 damage that you're taking and not six. I mean, Blackwater Behemoth is the other one that I can think of, obviously, at this at this mana cost, which is healing you for eight and removing a minion and then threatening to, to heal you for even more if it's not removed, right? Like once the wings are gone, like are you pointing those cards at a minion? I mean, you could. You could put, I mean, but if you're sending a Howling Blast or an Icy Touch at a minion, that means they're not hitting your opponent's face, and your opponent might be pretty happy about that, actually. So, I guess for me, I'm not thinking about this being the reason to shift so much as, like, you know, no much is a really good card, and I want to be able to do that and have sustainability in these matchups that Frost otherwise normally can't heal. And... Frostworm's Fury is great, but it doesn't clear the way for an Astalor because their stuff is still alive. It's just a different approach to lethality where I want this stuff dead, not frozen. So you still have some freeze cards, and it is it is upside the fact that the main body can kill things via freeze besides, but I think the utility is just... Well, patchwork isn't going to cut it here because patchwork destroys something randomly, and here I get to choose the two things I kill while making a body. And this is a more threatening body than patchwork, and the the double frost, uh, one blood ran patchwork. Yeah, it did. And there is it is worth noting, we talked about this uh, with the with the Naga card the, that does the triple freeze. You can just wait until turn eight if that yeah. Naga is active, and it's still really powerful. Sindragosa hit, hit, Horn of Winter, freeze three more things, you're destroying five things. So maybe that was slowed down on purpose so that we needed to wait until turn eight yeah. and so, instead of turn seven to kill five things unconditionally um, because you can also use that to bypass the Divine Shield problem. So that, that could be a large swing. Maybe that's worth pursuing. Maybe that's the thing that we're supposed to be chasing here, which would probably end up being Frost, Frost, Blood. Right? It would probably end up being Frost, Frost, Blood. That's also presupposing you live to turn eight with those, with those two cards in your deck. It is. It is. No <laughs> muncher goes a long way. That card is I know. nuts. Okay. Okay. We've talked a lot about the colossal. We do have one more card, or is it four more cards? So if you look at the end of this article, return to Naxxramas unlocks Death Knight's full potential with the class's first location and colossal cards. But the Lich King isn't the only one getting support. The mini set also includes all new dual type minion creations, advanced synergies, and a terrifying new way. To win the game, we have Rivendare War Rider. Six mana, six, six, neutral, undead, legendary, death rattle. Shuffle the other three horsemen into your deck. What are the other three horsemen? Oh, no. Zeliac, Conquest Rider, 
Six mana, six, six taunt. Death rattle. If you had all four horsemen die this game, destroy the enemy hero. Kothaz, death rider. Six mana, six, six with rush. Death rattle. If you had all four horsemen die this game, destroy the enemy hero. And his name is all Frenchy. Blaumo, <laughs> famine rider. There's, there's, it's an E-A-U-X. Blaumo. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, six mana, six, six lifesteal. Death rattle. If you had all four horsemen die this game, destroy the enemy hero. So, you get a 6-6, just you have to play a 6-mana six 6-6, six 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 that does nothing, but when it dies, his three buddies jump into your deck. One is Lifesteal, one is Rush, one is Taunt. When all four of them die, so does your opponent. You cannot cheat the Death Rattle, you can't smokescreen this, because the minions have to die, it's like Boar Priest. You have to have seven dead boars. So you have to have four you sort, dead you sort of can. You sort of can, right? Because... Oh, I know. I guess they have to. They have to have actually died. And then the next, tri- the next one that triggers, it's the other way around. They can get silenced and die, uh, and and then not. And trigger, And then you can but play Zyrella time- Hero. And then you can play yes. Zyrella Hero. I know where your head is going. I know what yes. you, yes. what all this is about. Yeah. So, first of all, let's just get this out of the way. Hey, wild players, have fun. I hope this isn't too slow because Flark's Boom Zooka. Is a oh, fun man. card. It is for those of you that don't know what Flark's Boom Zooka is. I don't know how you could not know. Oh, how it's a could they not know? Seven mana Best legendary spell. Card. Seven mana legendary spell. You pull three minions out of your deck. They attack three random enemy minions, and then they die. So if you if you play Master's Call and the only minions in your deck are Maxima and Rivendare War Rider, then you Maxima Blastenheimer, hit him with a Rivendare, turn seven. You flark Boomzooka, <laughs> and you tell your opponent to get flarked, and, and the game is over. Uh, if you're playing a priest deck, and you decide you want to illuminate into a Xerix cloning gallery, you can do that. You can do that if you want to do that. There are ways. There are a bunch of different ways to do this in Wild. In Standard, I wish you all the best of luck, and by you all, I mean Edelweiss. Okay, so I have two things. One is, of course... This is just an extra win condition for blood, potentially, that is damage agnostic. So you sort of, you have it in there. It, man, I really hope this pushes the 30 card because people still play Renathal yeah. in triple blood and I'm like, stop, stop. It's not, it's not okay. But this will make you just win the game. So uh, with the location, really, really good with the location because otherwise you don't have time to play this many six mana cards. Six is a really crucial breaking point here because it means that you can't play two in one turn, uh, which would otherwise be a way that you would try and like you know get through quickly if you knew your opponent didn't have transform effects. But if you can play this and at minimum get a four or five rush from your location and guaranteed kill it on your turn, like that's huge, because otherwise you know it'd be hard to to work around. Uh, transform effects speaking of transform effects uh the class that has those shaman is probably also pretty good at this because it has a draw spell that draws minions oh that you cost... prescience huh you press yeah from the other side yeah so so yeah you can you can prescience to get the first half and then you can prescience to get the other half right the the, the horseman two right? of the three kind of... yeah. yeah two of the three like it's it's not it's not like, oh, I just draw the whole combo, but uh, that's probably just as well. It, it, like, at least is taking advantage of that targeted draw. And then, yeah, you can do something like from the other side to just play all three in one turn. They die automatically and GG. Can, can I offer you another scenario? What? Does it so, involve Quest Priest? No. No. Paladin. Does it involve cutting? Okay. Okay. Yeah, Paladin has pyro equality. So. No, Paladin has uh, has order in the court and front lines. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Although front lines doesn't kill them. No, but it gets the ball on board once. That's true. Yeah. So huh. you know, I'm just I'm just giving you things to think about. That's all. Yeah. 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 Okay. I dig that. I dig that. I <laughs> thought you were talking about Kirby's Dreamland earlier in the show. <laughs> You seem to be going back to Dreamland. Yeah. So this is, yeah. you could get a reduced uh, equality. Actually, 
oh man, I've yeah, got this Pario, in my right? brain. Yeah. Like you can still run Pyro. The main thing is like you still need to play the first half and kill it. I think that is the trickiest thing is it's not like just at start of game you have the four horsemen in your deck. I think they realize that would be too good. But yeah, I mean, once you play it, if you front lines and you get Carriel or you already reduced inequality to one, you get a Pyro and you get the three horsemen. You just you just ten mana front lines equality. Easy. Okay. Sure. <laughs> All right. I, I well. mean, real, realistically, realistically though, right? Like, this is a one card win condition in a slow control deck when you would otherwise play fatigue, right? It 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 alleviates having to play Renathal to fight for fatigue if you can play this in your deck. Now, granted, the other control decks will have Theotar. They'll have other ways to deal with this. Presumably, Theotar is going to be less of an issue if you can, because this is going to come down immediately. And as mm. long as they don't silence it or transform it, then you, the rest of them are going to come down immediately. And um, but like realistically, this is something that like we're playing. You play the quest in Quest Priest to have a way to end the game without having to piece together 30 or 40 damage, right? Yeah. And so this is another way to give yourself inevitability as a control deck without having to rely on fatigue as a win condition. It's it's slow as hell, but if, you're, <laughs> if, if your entire game plan is stay positive and don't die, then this is something that you could just throw in and it could be a potential way to to end the game, especially against another control. You know what needs this the most and has no way to take advantage of it? Control Warrior. <laughs> yeah. Well, they could shield slam stuff. I mean, they can brawl and whatever. No, game. no, no. I mean, from the, drawing, from the drawing them is the hardest part. I mean, maybe Warrior has enough draw that you can just draw your whole deck at this point if you yeah. if you really build for that. Char Charge Warrior does that, right? I mean, Charge Warrior effectively be between like, um, you know, the destroy your uh, weapon, draw a card, I, and... I guess it would be a Frontlines deck. Yeah, yeah that's weird. The, yeah. the problem is that... Oh, to the front. To the front. To the front. Yeah, 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 yeah. To the front. Yeah. To the front. The problem is that Shield Shatter doesn't kill them. So I, I, I don't know what is your kill them all at once in the end. We don't have, uh, you know, who would be great with this is, uh, I don't remember the card, but it's three mana, three, four, that just ate your, your board. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah, but I mean, if you can get a bunch of them discounted with a brawl, right, with From the Depths, you know, like that's, it, it's, it, yeah, it's asking a lot. But... I, so I actually... Uh, chat pointed out something very relevant here that I didn't realize. I didn't even read that the horsemen that get shuffled in have keywords. So, yeah. like, they're all 666. Six, six. <laughs> um, one has taunt, one has rush, and one has lifesteal. Varian, for the time that he's still around, draws the taunt and, and rush. So, I'm thinking this shaman. You know, your first prescience draws you Varian and Rivendare War Rider. You you play the the War Rider, get it killed. That's going to be the hardest part for Shaman is killing its own minions. Um, but then you know you get Varian later on to draw two of them, and you're you're most of the way there. Yeah, and, and Warlock. Oh, well, yeah. from the other side kills them at the end it's just like right. for the killing the war rider uh, it, it, it's uh, yeah i mean from the, the with part. from the other side it's more like the old like uther otk decks right, right? Yeah. where you just needed to get them all in hand and then you just play them all at once like the that that's what the from the other side is going to kill them all regardless so that could give you something i mean warlock theoretically could take advantage of something like like shallow grave to just shuffle a whole bunch of them into the deck and you know use some of the other things i don't i don't know mad at arms will figure something out that's that's you know does something i think there i i think that is as a control player it's something that i'm interested in because it's <laughs> one card right to throw into your deck for the other control decks to to be able to end the game without having to put renathal into your deck to fight for fatigue like i am tired of having to run renathal in control decks because it makes them just that much less consistent like when you need, like I was playing the forty card Dragon Paladin. It's like 
you never find both halves of the of the equality clear like ever when you need it right because you always find one half you're drawing for the other half and you just never get there so like not having to put renathal in and still have a way to win that doesn't rely on just out fatiguing and therefore re requiring you to play renathal i'm interested in that as a control player yeah, I just refuse to play Renathal and then accept like, well, they're playing the worst deck. They probably lose to more other people, but every once in a while I'm going to lose uh, to Fatigue. Yeah. But often I was finding as Triple Blood that I just killed them because I actually could go face. So, listeners, I'm going to pull the podcast back down to earth here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm this glad been, my co This has been Kofi of Hour with Edelweiss and Wicked Good. I'm glad my co host <laughs> had a good time. Uh, this is a slower Lee Star Seeker who is currently in standard and is not good enough to mitigate whoa. the Renathal problem. Whoa, 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 whoa. At least turns your stuff into legendaries. That has been outdated for some time. It was questionable when. It came out. I mean, like, it, it, it functioned because it was Control Warrior, and eventually you were just like, well, I need these to be things that are threats and not sure. removal. Yeah. But, but it the was... average power of legendaries was way higher and less and less niche than it is now. The, the average quality of cards was lower, so legendaries were further apart, or were closer yes. together. Um, it's not that legendaries were better, it's that other cards were worse. Other cards were worse, yes. But at... After this it death rattle goes off, now. after this death rattle goes off, your opponent plays a single patchwork, and you're like, "Well, I lose now." Like it's just you lose to the card patchwork. You can't beat that, which is <laughs> but, comes down but, on but seven. It's not. It's not the only win condition. It's just a well. Okay, for some of them, well, it may be the only win condition, and they'll be sad, uh, and I will be the death knight laughing. But in the case of like triple blood decay, you just you throw this in, and it's in addition to your Astalor and Mo Grain yeah. and all that stuff. Like you, I mean, unless you're doing like a full on meme deck, like you have other minions in your deck, and these are never going to sit in your hand. If you're playing against a patchwork deck, you're going to play them immediately the turn that you draw them, no matter what, unless you're actually going to die. So it's really and just I like the like, minions that are in your deck. I don't like committing my turns to a bunch of six mana six sixes that I have to play when I top deck them. That doesn't sound good. If you're in a good. control mirror against Blood Knight, that Blood Death Knight, they are not killing you that fast most of the time. If you're another control deck, they're not. But it'd be nice to have a choice, wouldn't that. it? Like, you're. Do you you're ever really have a choice? Yeah. Well, you can choose what deck to play, but also when it comes with blood <laughs> decay, like you can actually kill people. You can actually get there. I understand that, like in the world where we have two attrition control decks going head to head, that this might be to Renathal if they don't patchwork the bodies. But it's just such a long shot for a meta that we are nowhere near. Like, would this have I mean, been good enough in Voyage to the Sunken City? I mean, imagine if we had this in the uh, in the Elysiana Warrior meta. Think about I'm how not many gonna, those qualifiers would have been. I'm not going to do that. So <laughs> it, in the case of Blood, I feel like it's the most just like, yeah, we can give a slot to that because it's it's just like more stuff that you can maybe kill them with. And 6 mana 6-6 six, six isn't the worst that line, particularly when you've got one has taunt, one ha they have keywords, right? Except for this first one. Except for the one you have to play. Yeah. Um, you it's know, they a Reno taunt, deck. What is a Reno taunt, deck anyway? Rush. And, no, it's not. <laughs> but they have Taunt, Rush, and Lifesteal. Uh, Lifesteal. Life so those are like I, relevant yeah. keywords, and they're they're not irrelevant bodies either. There's certainly been plenty of times where, in the case where I sort of most want this, you know, against something slower, where it's just like, uh, I want like something to play that's a relevant body and not just a two two or a two three or like a school teacher. And, uh, you know, you've got no muncher. You're still, of course, going to have no muncher. But here you've got more sort of mid-rangey bodies that you can just, like, throw at them. And enough of them happen, and they'll just die. <laughs> I would be surprised if there was a large portion of games where you needed this death rattle to go off to win that you wouldn't have won anyway. I'd be surprised. There won't be none, but I don't think there will be many. Like, if we need the six sixes for threat density, I don't know what's going on in those matchups. That doesn't match the standard I've been playing. And the standard <laughs> I've been playing, you're not short on six six mana six sixes for threat density. That's not that's not a, a problem or a solution that I'm looking for. I don't need either half of that equation. So, so it is entirely possible that there is some way to lean into this. 
I plan on leaning into it by queuing into people doing that on the day it comes out and wishing them a happy Valentine's Day as I, as I curve out with one drops and two drops and they have a six mana six six in their hand that they play and then die to my grave strength or whatever I'm playing. Now, doesn't mean there's no way this works. And I like hearing both of you find ways this could happen. And Edelweiss, this is why we wanted you to read this live on the show because it was just a journey into a magical place. But I'd be surprised if it was a major ladder contender. And if it is, I would be concerned about that meta. Any meta where this is happening routinely and it wins you games often, that's I'm a little concerned about the play patterns. Can, but can it does look fun. A quick, can I offer quick, a quick counterpoint? So I joined this podcast almost exactly a year ago. And the first episode that I was on was when we were talking about Anixia's Lair. And on that day, we all saw Kazakasan, and we all looked at it and said, this looks fun, but there's no way that this is going to be a relevant card in the meta. And for the next three months, that was all we played against. So I'm willing to be wrong on this, but I'm also looking at this saying this is a card that a lot of people are going to try and it's it's a neutral so there's a lot of different ways you can try to get it to work and a lot of the times whenever we've looked at one of these neutral legendaries that looks like it's really fun and really slow and there's no way that it's going to work boy do we look stupid the next week so <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to make this work and I have a feeling that if I'm not saying that all these ways are going to work. They're probably go going to all be there. A lot of them are going to be bad. But if Lady Prestor was able to be meta relevant for a month, I don't I, I could see a world in which this is too. That's all I'm saying. I do not think this is Kazakhstan. I was higher on that card than than you two were. Uh, I'm probably still higher on this card than you two are. Uh, oh, but no, you're I not. Don't... not. Not than me. I'm fine with I'm, I'm <laughs> on the same level as you are. We'll so. see. I think another thing is we're going to get rotation and very much dependent on what happens in that new expansion. This could be showing up a lot more than it does in six set. It could like, listen, I, four set I, tends I to be slower. Over the way we were winning in voyage, maybe this fits in. I could see it and I'd rather have some way that games end instead of no way that games end though. Given the cards that are in the March of the Ledge King standard, I don't think that we will have a problem even after rotation with finding ways to actually do damage and, and lethal people, even with post-nerf to Nathrys. Um, but, I don't know, I like, shuffling in three cards that are all six mana neutrals, I don't know, it feels a lot yeah, like and Cthune the Shattered. And having to run all those minions to get to Nathrius pumped up enough to do enough damage to <laughs> oh, win. Oh, come game. now. That's come never going to happen. Compare I, to I'm, Cthulhu I'm the Shatter. Saying, like, the I'm, Cthulhu I'm the Shatter comparison, that I think, is pretty close. Eh, yeah. I, I, I mean, like, Druid... Uh, first of all, whenever there's a neutral legendary, the use case is Druid. Druid's already running things like due process to draw through their whole deck in order to be able to do Astor combo. And this this is something that you know I don't I don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna keep doing Astlor combo that deck has needed some help maybe this is another way that they get a win condition or a secondary win condition for one card in that deck like there a Svalna priest runs exactly one death rattle that right now is light shower elemental that deck draws through incredibly quickly and I yeah, can but... see that happening as well because those games go very long there are I think that there are enough ways that someone is going to hit potentially i i think that it's the likelihood is is higher on this than on some of the other neutral legendaries we've seen i i think it's going to get tried in a lot of stuff and then there will maybe there will be two maybe three classes yeah. that actually have the cards to make it functional uh, i think shaman has some real potential because of targeted draw impressions and a way of triggering all three at once in from the other side because that is like guaranteed it plays all three of them it kills all three of them 
And that is sort of the trickiest part with all of them being six mana is how do you how do you get them all played and killed? Um, there's yeah, and we don't know the support yet. And there's like they don't print this without nothing to go with it, right? And the jailer saw a little play, right? The jailer from the last mini set saw a little play, mm -hmm. looked a little memey, yep. but people tried it out. It had some it had some use cases. This will have some fringe use cases, I think. I'm yeah. gonna emphasize the word fringe. I think fringe is about right. right. But people will try it. The amount of discussions that we've had about it so far already make me happy that they made it. Because this is the kind of thing that a certain subset of the player base advice reaches for and looks for whenever they can. And I am glad they're giving those players something to dream about. And there will be times when this works. There will be streams on day one where this works and it will end up on Troll and it will be a grand old time. I think... In the grand scheme of things, unless we get some very powerful support enablers here, that this is going to work less often than it won't work. I imagine it'll be a pretty lopsided graph as to which portion is larger, but when it works, it'll be awesome. Yeah. And a lot of people are going to try. You're going to see it. Yes. You're going to see it, right? Like, whether or not it works or not, like, this is not Neptalon and Ozomat, right? Like, these, this is a little bit more of of a of a deck deck can a deck building challenge that people are going to try to make it work because people love the words destroy the enemy hero that is something that that people enjoy and there are a lot of otk gamers that will try to find a way to make this work i mean they got uther you know uther of the ebon blade to work eventually right so i i imagine that at some point someone will figure out a way to way that this works how consistent will it be who knows but they'll figure something out i have my theories as to how consistent it will be not I will very leave, i will leave those as an exercise for the listener and that's all we have for today there are going to be so for everyone that doesn't remember how these work the reveals are usually like four days uh so we'll have cards we had a few cards today we've got on tomorrow We've got the neutrals first, then a hunter, then priest cards. On Saturday, we've got paladin, warrior, and mage, and demon hunter. Wow, a lot. And on Sunday, we've got shaman, rogue, druid, and warlock. So by Sunday the 12th, all the cards will be revealed. And we will expect the patch to hit. Uh, we, we know the patch will hit on Tuesday, on the 14th. We know that will include mercenaries changes, as outlined earlier in the show. Uh, there's probably some other stuff. Matt London has made some teases, as he is known to do. And I would be unsurprised if we got Nax in Classic along with getting Nax in mm. Standard. I would be highly unsurprised. Oh. Mm. Because that would, would be make right a lot of sense, it. right? Like... Yeah. They've yeah. alluded to this yeah, for a while, and putting Nax in multiple formats at the same time seems like the sort of thing they would do. And Classic is full of bots anyway, so might as well give humans a reason to play it. Um, I would I would expect that, but I don't have any inside information, don't know anything that's coming. This is all speculation, but that is my ex-speculation. And I guess if, if it is going into Classic, so now here's an interesting question. Does it go in with unnerfed Undertaker or nerfed Undertaker? I hope they give us that for like somewhere between two <laughs> weeks to a month. <laughs> like I, I can see a short period with it. There was yeah. never a Nax format without it is the problem. So you start to right. think because they didn't nerf it until GVG came out six months oh, later, that's right. which is that's true. insane. That's true, yeah. um, so you have to wonder, does it become a what could have been? Or do they leave it as it was? And I think there is a reasonable argument for both. But let me tell you, if they don't nerf it, probably go play Undertaker. Probably do that. As when we had Luna on the show years ago, she was saying that they used to have to BGH under Undertakers. <laughs> oh, man. Well, when BGH was three mana, but still, yeah. I mean, and and your one drop had done. seven power. Yeah, <laughs> the damage was done if the one drop was a 7-6 or whatever. Or no, 7-8, right? Because it had more toughness than power. It did, yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll see, but that is my that is my personal... 
I, I think it's more than a guess. It's like, come on. I mean, they gave gonna... us they gave us um, Knights of the Frozen Throne for a month, right before Lich King came out, right? So it it fits. Yeah. How quickly we've forgotten about that already because the cards weren't all that impactful except for a couple. But you know, they did except for that. animated Berserker. You know, card is good. I mean, so, they might even, if they really wanted to be spicy, they might throw an extra Amos into standard. And just thinking I, of... Uh, please don't Lothab. Please don't put Lothab <laughs> and Shadow Step in the same format. Please don't oh. do that. Shadow of Demise is in standard. That's that's a lot maybe of Maybe that would Lothabs. be enough to finally get Shadow Step nerfed. That would, be my, that would be my dream. Or maybe that's enough to finally convince people that Lothab should not be in Core Set because that card is evil. I don't know. One time, I guess one no. time is a year's worth. So, like, hmm. yeah. It's you think yeah, people were upset about Bran? Just <laughs> wait until they get Lothab for a year. Oh man! <laughs> it's like three, yeah. th like like three three hours dungeon, right? Like, ugh. Well, that is all the news we have, and uh, we have a small tournament section. But hey, let's play the bumper for old time's sake. It's the Grand Tournament! So we got an announcement from Supergirl Gamer Pro. They are going to be doing another Battlegrounds tournament. This is the weekend of March 4th and 5th. Qualifiers on the 4th um, the and the championships on the, on the 5th with a $2,500 prize pool. If you are someone who identifies as a woman, or I believe non-binary, yep, um, then sure. you are. There is a link where you can apply, and um, you should go do it because it is a tournament that you can participate in, and it will be presumably streamed. So that is something that is, you know, <laughs> kind of few and far between right now. So that's an opportunity, and wanted to make sure that you're aware of it, so you can go apply if that is. If you meet those criteria and uh, think you want, think you have what it takes. Yeah, cool. And that's tournaments. So we have many folks we'd like to thank. Check out our thanks section on the website, coincity.com. You can find our contact info, show notes, patron information. You can monetarily support us over at patreoncom coincity. Join us every week live by following us on Twitch at twitch.coinkc.com. Join our community chats in our Discord at discord.coinkc.com. Write into our email at coinkc.gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at coinkcseed. Like, share, and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash coinkcseed. If you like some CC swag, head on over to our shop at shop.coinkcseed.com. Big thanks to our producers. Number Theory, Doge Decay, Crash Cat, B Squatch, David P, Fade the Black, Wild Lou, Jeremy T, Bottle Caps, Lucky, Grumpy Monk, Crab Mart, and the Burger Club. Coinkcseeds. Who's got them? Edel, you got him? Yeah, so my coin concede is going to be to Bodicus in a very roundabout way here. Bodicus got me into Critical Role basically just by talking all the time about how he was re-watching it. And I was like, this man is re-watching something with hundreds of like four hour long episodes. There's got to be something there. <laughs> And as I was playing you know, more 5th edition D&D &D with my, my group and stuff and just generally uh, enjoying that, I decided to, to give it a go. A long time ago, there, there was a moment where I listened to the podcast of season one and I just kind of fell off because there was a lot of it and they're very long. But now, I don't know, I just, I got into it. I generally watch the, the YouTube videos rather than just listening to the audio, which I, I think adds a little bit of, of something to it. And because of that, just, <laughs> we're going a long way here, but because of that, in season three, they brought on Will Friedle, who is a voice actor that does uh, Ron from Kim Possible, if anyone watch that cartoon as a kid he has a podcast called i hear voices and they're doing this voice actor like amateur voice actor competition it's supposed to be like a voice actor uh american idol type deal just trying to find uh new talent and i was like oh that's pretty cool 
and I put together a submission using the editing skills that I learned on this podcast. I went to my library, which has a recording studio, and just recorded some, some takes of various things. I think the best piece was actually an ex excerpt from White Fang that I did narration for. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. Could, could totally end up being nothing, but I never would have even like heard about the contest or gotten to submit if it hadn't been for bot getting me into critical role. So it's funny how things all kind of tie together sometimes, just little ripple effects. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, and you, you miss a, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Exactly. Correct. Steve, how about you? Well, I am going to coin concede to my parents because they, not nearly as exciting as Edel's doing, but they um, went to, they my mom still keeps kosher, and so they went to the kosher meat market, and um, brought me back unexpectedly a six pack of dr brown celery soda which we Ooh. have established is the best soda on earth eh. so oh uh best dr brown's maybe best soda uh, on earth. Well, we've all agreed to that like we, I you know, don't ruin this for me i don't think i agree with either of you <laughs> i'm a dr brown's cream soda fan okay uh, this, well Ray Ray is very I'm good. A cream soda fan. it is it is yeah. it is a good it is a, and it is not e it's not easy to get without going someplace specialty that has it. So I am, I, uh, I, I wish the pastrami that they brought me from that market was as good as the Salre soda because it was really not, but you know, one out of two ain't bad. So, um, yeah. So, you know, coin could see to them. Cause that was a, a lovely surprise. That sounds very nice. Um, I'm going to, first of all, I forgot to thank our sub. So Nate dog 632. Thank you so much for the sub. Um, coin conceding to craptasm. Had a had a good conversation this week. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, to Bassoon Buffoon, friend of the show. Uh, had a nice little pow on his Discord yesterday. It was uh, cool to hang out with people there. And uh, my co-hosts for being very supportive this week when I've had a lot going on that I wasn't expecting. So, coin could see to you two. And Boticus, you're still a co-host in my mind. I pointed. <laughs> it was very pointed. And that's going to do it for this episode of Coin Concede. So keep calm and draw your horsemen. And if you see us on ladder, Coin Concede. Coin Concede. Coin Concede. All right, stopping recording. Cool. We did it. Yeah, we did it. Four cards, hour and a half. Sounds about right. <laughs> One of those cards was is, a like, bunch of cards. Yeah. And we're not going to get to talk about any more of them because it's just going to come out. And that's how many sets work. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. But it was, yeah. it was a good conversation that represented all of us very well. So, <laughs> stream, I'm going to bring you down now. But thank you so much for hanging out and being wonderful. Um, and we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.